I'm artist Andrea Kirk. Welcome to my channel, The Art Chick. Today I'm going to teach you how to draw and paint a glowing jack-o'-lantern using both watercolor pencils and Prismacolors. For this project, you will need these supplies. Watercolor paper and a pencil and eraser, both watercolor and Prismacolor pencils. If you don't have Prismacolors, you can also use regular colored pencils. You will also need a cup of water, paper towels, paint brushes, and a pencil sharpener. To begin your pumpkin, take your pencil and draw an oval shape. We're going to make our pumpkin really fat. Okay, and it doesn't have to be a perfect oval. In fact, if you add bumps and ridges, it's actually going to be more interesting. So, as you can see, I did that. And then um, you want to add the stem. Now I'm gonna come down here a little bit and just bring the stem over like this with a little curve. Okay, and at the bottom, you're going to add ripples like this. And then curve up again and connect together like this. And then from here, with each peak, you're going to draw a line that goes upward like that. And it gives you that twisted look to the stem. And then just take your eraser and erase the extra lines back behind. Okay, now from here, you are going to do the face. And so, we're going to do a triangle here. And then come over here and do another triangle. And again, don't think that they have to be perfect and that they have to be the exact same size. Jack-o'-lanterns are not perfect. That's what makes them so fun. So right here we're doing an upside down triangle like this. And then to make our jack-o'-lantern look three-dimensional, you are going to add an extra line on the inside of the triangles we drew. Okay, on this one you're going to go this way. Also what I want you to add is a line that kind of goes back from point to point. And then for the nose, we are going to do another line that comes up right here. Okay, and now let's begin the mouth. So let's give our jack-o'-lantern a toothy grin. So you come down, do a tooth here, go up back around, do a tooth, and come up, okay? And then from here you do the bottom part of the mouth. We're going to add a tooth right in the middle. Okay, so this is really easy. And there we have our smile on our jack-o'-lantern. And again, to make it look three-dimensional, you are going to add the lines on the inside Okay, so do one here, then we're going to draw some lines going back on the tooth, just this tooth though. The other two are up high, however, um, you will want to show this side on that one. And you could show just a hint of this one, like that. And then connect a line from here up to the top. And see all the character that that adds, having the bumpy oval. Um, now we need to add the texture of the pumpkin itself and so now we are going to do some lines going back first like this. Okay, and you just curve around and bring those lines down like that. Okay, and you just you continue doing that all the way around. A 
Another thing that you can do to add some dimension to your pumpkin is at the bottom where you have your lines, just take an eraser and erase that entire bottom line. And from here, you are going to do a bump at the bottom of each one like this. You need to have a shadow at the base of your pumpkin and where he's pretty wide, we're going to start one line over here for a shadow and then the other one over here for a shadow. And then back here, um, we're going to do a horizon line just to separate the table or ground or whatever you want it to be. You can choose what you want your background to be. And just draw a horizontal line all the way across. It doesn't have to be perfect, but then you can see um, the horizon line and then you have the background table and then the shadow. As you begin the coloring process, line up your watercolor pencils that you're going to use for the pumpkin in the background from lightest to darkest. That's the easiest way for me. And please don't laugh at my teeny tiny ivory blacks. I bought a brand new pack of watercolor pencils and I have four kids and I think that kind of explains why that box is lost. And so <laughs> I'm left with these teeny tiny pencils. However, when I do a background, rather than just using black on my picture, I like to use burnt umber, I like to use navy blue, I have kind of a purplish red. And so those colors will all help to make it look very uh, natural. So. Anyway, I'm going to show you some techniques. We will start with the background and we'll take it from there. For the background, I want you to start with the ivory black. Again, don't laugh at mine. It's tiny. This will be really funny watching me try and color with this. But basically, um, as you're coloring with a color pencil, let me just show you a couple of techniques. Make sure that you go in one direction like this. Okay, and go all the way to the edge. When we start adding water to the pencil, um, we all have a paper towel underneath so that it doesn't go off on the table. But you kind of get an idea of how to color that. Now to make that darker, um, you can add the other shades. This is indigo, and so what you'll do is you'll just add that over the top. So I'm going to do the complete background with these colors. So you'll do indigo over the ivory black like this and it just gives more coverage. And then another color that will deepen that background is obviously burnt umber. It will just warm it up a little bit. Okay, and when you go to paint this it will look really really nice. All right, so just use those colors. You can also add Delft blue, and that's a really cool color too. Now, something interesting that you might want to know, um, blue and orange are complementary colors. And so if you add this Delft blue in your background, it's really going to look striking against your jack-o'-lantern. So, Make sure you get a lot of this Delft Blue in there as well. It will be a stunning piece. So anyway, I'm gonna put it on time lapse and color this entire area, and then we'll paint it, and then we'll begin the foreground. Now for the fun part, take your paper towels and put them underneath your pumpkin. And then you'll also need a paper towel, and you can use part of this one, um, to dab your brush when you're painting. And what I would recommend is to have a bigger brush like this one, and then also a smaller brush for the edges. Okay and you will take your water and you're going to dip 
in the water, dab on the paper towel, and then you're going to take your brush and start stroking back and forth. Now look how beautiful that is. You want that painted look. Um, that's what watercolor pencils are for. It's, it's almost like magic when you watch it come to life. And notice that Delft blue standing out. And don't worry, if you don't have Delft blue, um, you can use any dark blue. So don't stress if you don't have that particular color. But now you can see the reason why I don't just use black. And that applies to almost anything that I do with art. If I'm doing a dark background, it's never just one shade because you want to get that depth in your painting. And see, so you can see all that color. Now, um, another thing you can do, if you don't want the straight line look, you can take your paintbrush and you can do an X pattern. You can just go through and eliminate all those lines. Just be careful around the pumpkin. You, you want to make sure your edges are nice and smooth. Okay. You can even see some of the burnt umber back in there. Okay. And then take your small brush and use that around the stem. So dip and dab and then apply. And that's all that it takes to turn watercolor pencils into paint. Foreground. Um, back by the black, I want to use this Matter Carmine. It's a reddish brown. We're going to mix that with brown as well. Color up into the blue a little bit and then come down. You'll want to eliminate as much white as possible. Okay, and do that on both sides. Before I put it on time lapse, you'll want to take a burnt yellow ochre and apply that. And that will just come down from the red and basically it's going to make the table look as though it's also glowing. Do that on both sides and then what you'll do is you'll have that fade into raw sienna and just get lighter and lighter as you go down it will just keep fading from dark to light. Watch as I put it on time lapse. So that was super easy, and now we can start to paint um, the pumpkin background a little bit more, the table. Uh, so clean off your brush, and then do the dip and dab again. And start at the top where it's darker and you're just going to pull that red down into the golden shade that we colored. Okay, you can also blend that black into it a little bit just to tone it down so it's not quite so striking and see how that meshes together. Just make sure that your edge is against the pumpkin and then also the shadow line right here are nice and straight and even. Okay, do that on the other side, dip and dab. And don't forget to put your paper towel underneath. That helps a lot so that you don't have a messy table when you're done. So let that dry for a minute and then we'll start shading down here. Underneath the pumpkin you're going to need to use really dark colors. So I'm going to take my microscopic ivory black. I'm sure yours is much bigger than mine, but I already explained the story with that one. And you're going to color right underneath the pumpkin. OK. 
okay just follow those curves make sure you don't flatten those curves you want to make sure that you keep that nice rounded shape at the bottom of each one you're going to bring the black out and as it comes down it will go in a straight line like this okay and then around the edges that's when it will gradually round like that Okay, and then so that you don't have to sit and watch me color this entire portion, um, you start with the black and then take your matter carmine or a deep red. Again, don't think you have to use these exact colors. So you just take this deep red color and go over that. You can see how it's getting really red as we come down. We're gonna cover some of that with burnt umber. But I do want you to color over the black with the red. Okay, and then just have that come out a little ways from there. Now along edges, I'm okay with you following that edge when you color. Just turn that pencil back around as you get away from the edge so that you have those nice lines. It helps you get complete coverage when coloring so that you don't have any white showing. And then take burnt umber and that's what's going to darken this a little bit more so that you don't have that really bright red. Okay, and you can even bring that umber down a little bit. From here, I want you to use what's called Geranium Lake. This is really bright, and again, we will have to cover some of that with the burnt umber to tone it down. I just like that rich color. Okay, so as you're going down, just think dark. You just want everything to be dark. So again, the burnt umber over that tones it down beautifully. You still get that rich undertone of the red. Okay, so it should look like that. And then just be sure to cover this entire area. And then we'll paint that. And then for the mega fun part, the actual jack-o'-lantern. So let's keep going. Again, take your paintbrush, rinse it out, dip and then dab, and then take the smaller brush and paint underneath the pumpkin, following that curve around each bump at the bottom. So you get a nice, crisp, clean edge. Okay, and then from there, you will just stroke back and forth. Okay, and you wanna pull that dark down into the red. Okay, so that your shadow is nice and dark. But make sure you, that red is pretty prominent too. You want that to show at the bottom because the further away that shadow gets from the pumpkin, the lighter it will be. So you don't want it to be black all the way down. You want it to have that red glow and then go to the dark above. Okay, and then the other thing is, um, on the edge, you need to kind of fade it into the table that you don't have just a straight perfect line. So I want you to pull that dark over and then down like this. Okay, so we get a nice fuzzy look. Okay, and then do it on the other side. Same exact thing. What I want you to do before we start coloring the pumpkin is take your eraser and go through and lighten all of the lines. Okay, you don't want to see those in the finished product. So just go through and erase all of that. Okay, you still want to see it, but just not as dark. So take your white and just down in the corner of the nose, I want you to color white. 
and then also do it right here on the mouth, underneath the top of the mouth, and also in this corner. Okay, and then from there, you're going to take a really light yellow, um, zinc yellow, and you're going to color above the white with that. But then I want you to give it more of a warmth, and so from there, take deep cadmium, and you're going to color right along the top like this. And then take that same deep cadmium, and I want you to color inside the eyes over here. So it's darker at the top and then get a little bit lighter towards the base of that by using the zinc yellow. And same thing down here, you have the white, and then from the white you're going to fade first with the zinc yellow, and then you'll do the cadmium, the deep cadmium after that. And that's how you get that glow effect, is going from light to dark, otherwise it doesn't look like it's glowing. You have to have a variation of yellow. Now we're going to do something fun. So take this Naples yellow, okay, or just a dark, a darker yellow, and right up here against the, the eyes, or the glow in the eyes, we're going to color this darker shade of yellow. Okay, and then you also want to go along the base doing the same thing. And rather than coloring all of it, um, I'll just show you how to do this and then watch me in time lapse do the rest. But really quick, um, you're going to take orange chrome from there, or a darker orange, and you're basically going to go in and just add some shadowing right there in the corner. Okay, so notice how I go up along the edge. That will make it look more realistic. Now up here, you can get even darker, so I would suggest taking um, a spectrum orange or just one that stands out a little bit more, so kind of a reddish orange. You can also bring that down. Okay, and notice how you can see how it's three-dimensional. Um, you can even darken right here a little bit more. And one other thing, um, just so that you can see how it will stand out as you continue coloring, take that matter crimson and color on the other side of the eye. And look at that contrast going to look really, really good. So you can see the glow within there. You have just a faint little bit of white in the corner, and then it's yellow, and then you have this golden color on the inside. And when we get done here, it's going to look stunning. Watch as I put it on time lapse, and then we'll do the entire outside. Dip and dab your brush and go in and paint the yellow first. So where you have the white, you need to paint the white first and then up into the yellow. Okay, you want to maintain that bright white. You don't want to cover that. So on this one, just keep that in mind and then also down there. But again, back to this one, um, start with the lighter area and then work your way to the the dark. If you work from dark to light, then sometimes that dark will overpower. And the other thing too is we're going to go back over with Prismacolors um, to sharpen everything up. So know that this is just a base color 
and it doesn't have to be totally perfect. We're just getting the pencil to look like paint at this point and blending our shades together. Okay, so we'll finish doing all of that and then um, we will start to paint the actual pumpkin. I'm going to show you how to do one section and then I'll put it on time lapse again. But what I'd like to do is to start out with a darker shade, so burnt yellow ochre. And you'll take that and you're going to come down along one of those lines. And then over here, you'll do the same thing. Do a shadow right underneath the stem, like this. Okay, and make that shadow a little bit uneven. It will look more natural. And then the same thing on the bottom. You can actually have that shadow down there. And then right against where the eyes are. And also the mouth. Take that dark color that we used before you're going to get really dark. You want to outline first, like that. And then you're going to shade right up along that line with your pencil. So just follow that light brown line. But the key is to have contrast against the inner side of the mouth. And then as you come up a little bit, take that spectrum orange. You're going to color inside that red that we did. And go all the way up to the eye. And push down really hard right up against that eye. And yeah, the whole idea is to have dark against light so that it looks like it's glowing. And so from here, just continue doing that. Now one little trick I've got to hurry and show you. As you get close to this shadow, you want to have a light orange. And so take, um, I've got orange chrome right here. And I'm going to lighten you can even go lighter than that if you want. Middle chrome, so either one of those, but middle chrome might be better. And right up against that line, color really light, like that. I'm going to darken this area right here a little bit. So I take that matter carmine, I'm gonna go in there and darken what it does is it emphasizes that ridge right here to make that ridge look round. Okay, because you have the dark shadow here and then you have light right against the dark. So you have that strong contrast and then it fades to dark again. Okay, I watch how I fill in this area and then I want you to do the rest of the pumpkin keeping this technique in mind. Okay, so remember right up against the eye and the mouth, you want to be really dark, and then you lighten as you go up. Really quick, just so you can see how this ends up, let me just show you with the paint before I do the entire thing. So dip and dab, and then take your brush, go right along that light area. And I just want to show you what happens when you do this technique. It's really pretty. So always start in the lighter areas and then work your way towards the dark. And then you just want a gradual fade. Okay. And see how strong that color is? 
get rid of those pencil lines by blending them with the paintbrush. And now I'm going to put it on time lapse so that you can see the entire process emerge. We are so close to being done. Look at the light inside, how it emulates out. Absolutely beautiful. So for the stem, start with a really light shade. So you can do light yellow. You can also add white. From there, we are going to take the burnt umber. And you're going to draw a line straight up. You want to do that on each of them. And then at the very top, you will have a dark brown. Actually, it's kind of a medium brown, but you will add that next. Shade from right to left where the dark lines are. So you'll just kind of go up and shade along there. So just continue that process. And that just helps each ridge to stand out. We want to give it a lot of texture, so what we'll do is we'll add a really dark shadow underneath. This is burnt umber that I'm using. Go up the side so there's a strong contrast between the brown and the orange. Okay, and then you'll need to fade that out a little bit. So take orange and just go along the base of that brown, that dark brown, and shade right along the bottom, like that. Okay, and then from there, add orange along the base of the stem. You can add some orange up here as well. And so the middle part will be the lightest. That's where you want the light to be hitting the most. You can also take that burnt umber and along the top, let's add some lines of texture. So take your pencil and just stipple some texture on there. So it looks like an actual stem. So I did ivory black and then burnt umber as well. And if it's looking too harsh down here, just add more burnt umber kind of up along each section of the stem like this. And then yellow ochre is really good too. You want to push down hard. So you can add as much texture as you want on your stem. Just decide how heavy you want it and then just feel free to do whatever. Using your paintbrush and water, be sure to paint your stem. This will give it even more texture. So take an ivory black Prismacolor and the first thing you want to do is to clean up the edges on your jack-o'-lantern. You might want to fade your black out into the background so that it's not noticeable that you added that. But eliminating these lines out here, you know, where you see white or gray, um, it just really helps to have a nice clean edge. And I'm not done cleaning my edges, I'll do a few more on time lapse. I just wanted to show you all the different things you can do. So take that black and go up in between each of these ridges just to define them a little bit more. 
And then another thing that will help your jack-o'-lantern look like it's glowing more is take um, this dark red, it's called Rouge Cremoisy. It's a rouge color and so it's just a dark red and you can take that and color above and around the eyes and see how that makes a stronger contrast. And then again, fade that out. You don't want just a dark red line and then leave it. So make sure you fade that out. Just go along all your edges and you can darken all of them. And another thing, you can take this darker rouge. So this one is a brownish red. And this one you can carry on that black line and it will actually look a little more natural. It won't be quite so harsh. But you can just use that to continue shading near those dark lines. So your ridges up here can also be shaded. Now you get an idea of how to clean up to make it look more realistic. So I'm going to put this on time lapse and just follow along. And there you have it, the perfect Halloween jack-o'-lantern. And yes, I used it for my Halloween decor, of course. I hope that you really enjoyed this project. If you love art, and this is your very first time visiting my channel, feel free to subscribe. I have many more fun art projects in store for you. Thanks for visiting today, and we'll see you next time.